Welcome back to the channel. Dane Scott from Dane Scott's Truckers Lounge. I think in this episode, we're going to take us a ride in Blue Jay. Yeah. And we're going to take a look at something uh, I think you've seen before. And then also we're going to get an update on Grasshopper and the wiring and in-cab work that we're doing so that we can uh, fire it up pretty soon. I mean, we've already fired it up. We know it runs and everything, but we got to get all the wiring done so that it's done from the cab instead of down on the ground. And also we're going to take a look at some truck shows that are coming up. And what else are we going to do? We're going to look at some subscriber rides. So we got a whole bunch for you. So stick around town. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in a minute. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? So it's bath day around here. Yeah, Pistol Pete needs a bath. Uh-huh. Well, I can't wait to dig into this area. But uh, yeah, we're just getting them clean for right now and then start uh, doing the pimping like we do here at the Trucker's Lounge. Speaking of pimping, this is uh, one of the examples of it's the small details that make a truck look great. Uh, so uh, I've picked a trim color for the Burgundy Pistol Pete 359, so uh, check it out. <clears throat> when I use trim, I like to use lettering enamels because they're a little bit th thicker and they cover better. But they ain't cheap. But you can use any, like enamel paint, rust-oleum, you know, stuff like that. It's been a while since I used this orange because it doesn't want to open. So what you got to do is <clears throat> jack up the uh, the front wheel and go to it. put on kind of put it on heavy and then uh, get your brush strokes and pull it to get rid of your brush strokes so that the paint melts together <clears throat> so I did this on uh, a lot of people do this it's just a nice little touch to give a little uh, <clears throat> bling to your wheels see so we're gonna do all 10 and I'll show you the results okay and I forgot to tell you too after you clean around the the holes in your wheels use mineral spirits just a uh, paint thinner and make sure you clean them and get all the grease off otherwise they'll streak and you have to keep going back and fixing it but it, it'll look okay so here we go Yeah, like I said, it's the little things that make it unique. Oh man, I cannot wait for my car. Oh hey, you know, you guys can't really call yourself old school drivers unless you're uh, gulping down some of this hammer down coffee company coffee. I mean, have you tasted this stuff? They've got full throttle light roast, they've got full locker medium blend they've got a red eye espresso which is like a medium dark they've got a reset blend decaf but it's dark and my personal favorite that i'm waiting for patiently deep production dark roast so try hammer down coffee by clicking the link right below and that'll take you right to the site 
to order your very own hammer down coffee okay girls and boys boys and girls we're going on a little road trip to look at something special today This episode is brought to you by Billy Parker, GMC and Detroit Diesel Restorations from Norwood, North Carolina. I think I'll uh, move around to the back there. I don't like leaving my trucks out somewhere unless I have to. Let's go around the back where the Transstar is at. So you guys remember this guy? Go ahead.
And that engine looks clean. Great. Somebody's just knocking, sheet yeah. metal or sheet aluminum. Yeah. Actually, probably push it out for the bunk uh, compartment. Yeah. That cracked out there, but I ain't no big deal. I can be fasten. Yeah. It's prob probably was glued and the glue is deteriorated. Yeah, because yeah, there's no sign of rivets or anything. Yeah. Now there's little spot wells right there. Is that a 350 in here or 400? Oh, I don't know nothing about oh, it. Yeah. I just opened the doors up. <laughs> what do you say, Rick? 350? 350. Oh, yeah. According to the pump tag. Awesome. But you don't know who's had their fingers in it. Yeah. Either. Coffee counter engineers. <laughs> Owner operators. Owner operators. <laughs> Boy, she's all there. It is complete, and you know, the glass is good. There is nothing you got to get for this thing. Except updated rims and tires. <laughs> Although, if you're an old school guy like me, I'd keep them. Uh oh, birdies. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a bird nest right in here. <laughs> oh, is there? <laughs> I see it hanging down. Oh jeez. <laughs> well, you always got to find a critter, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm the critter finder. Used to be the cracker box hunter. I love those uh, those bullet yeah clearance lights. Those are so cool. Mine, mine just had the little. Like the international uh -huh. cab, like the uh -huh. thunder, thunder marker lights on the Kenworth. Nice long horns, those will sound good. Yeah. And it's and the visor, you know, all intact and complete. And There's the one stone chip right here. That's all I saw in the glass. Yeah. Now this door, I see the guts are out of this passenger door, but anyway. Those are big know, tanks, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Says, uh... 115 draw, 123 liquid, 120 gallon basically. So we weren't able to uh, see the uh, Transstar run that day. Uh, they had a problem with uh, some nasty fuel and they wanted to uh, drain the fuel, clean out the tanks, and uh, make sure that it ran without uh, ruining the uh, the fuel pump and, and all that. So uh, that'll be in an upcoming episode. We'll see it uh, go down the road. So you guys know I'm always playing around, trying stuff out to see if I like it or not, maybe changing it later. So check out what's going on inside Grasshopper this Saturday morning. Ha! <laughs> yee Talk about the 60s! <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe it. This was this was a rug, an area rug that my wife bought and never used. And it was sitting rolled up here because I brought it over. I was going to use it on the floor out here. And then I decided, nah, I don't want to get it that dirty. So uh, it was rolled up and I put my eyes on it last night. And I'm like, hey. Because <laughs> I was thinking about putting shag carpet in here because, hey. That's what was the thing back in the 60s and 70s. And so I said, well, I might as well play with that rug and see see what that looks like. I mean, it's not bad. It's pretty cool. Uh, but I may end up using this as, as a pattern for shag. Um, and I'm cutting this and putting this together just for now. Just, uh, I think it's probably temporary. Like I said, I'll probably find shag. But uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. This is... Oh, Dr. Frankenstein, I assume. <laughs> Doing surgery. Yeah, they were real neat how they did so. Lots more mouse crap. Look what we found. 
more of the rotten Mises garbage. I just can't get rid of it. The critters were all over this truck. Okay, and over there, we've got the uh, electric window all apart because we have to change out the motor because the motor doesn't work. And what else are we doing? Oh, that's uh, the covers off. We, we did get the squirrel cage motor running like a ding dong, so at least that'll work. Uh, and we got to run the wiring out for headlights, turn signals, uh, the electric window, of course, and the, uh, the heater motor. So we'll start over there to the right side and run our wiring over. We'll get rid of the uh, Mises garbage. Um, rewire all this. We're going to leave those lines because they look pretty good. We'll give them a shot. Okay, and while this is out, I'm taking the opportunity to uh, use our buddy steel wool here and the uh, wire wheel on the bench grinder to uh, clean up everything. See how nice that all looks? That's what the uh, cleaned up version looks like compared to that. So just cleaning stuff up. I don't know uh, how many of these gauges will stay. They probably will. That one's cracked. I don't like that, but we'll see. We'll see what the budget permits. Um, so I'm going to get this all cleaned. This one's done. This is the, uh, the left side. Uh, there again, I'm not so sure about keeping these gauges. They look pretty well worn. So if it's in the budget, I'll get some new ones. So it's time to check out some truck shows, including the ATHS York show coming up after this show. Have you guys not heard? The second annual GMC Jamboree is right around the corner. It's going to be Saturday, June 1st, right here in Conneaut, Ohio. And the Days Inn, which is right across the road, from where the show is, is giving a 10% discount. So if you uh, reserve your room, make sure you tell them that's why you're here and they'll give you the 10% discount. And also Evergreen Lake Park Campground, which is right down the road, only like a block, is uh, also doing the same thing. They're gonna give 10% discount on if you're camping, you're bringing a camper, or I know they rent cabins. So um, you better make your plans, you better get your reservations in because they're filling up and it's going to be bigger than last year. Last year was awesome. You guys made it happen. And so uh, everybody's like, are oh, you going to do it again? You're going to do it again? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to bring it to you again. And what it is, it's not just GMC. GMC is the, what do you want to call? We're calling out GMCs and we're giving a prize to whichever GMC that the Boy Scouts pick out. Last year they picked out their favorite GMC and Truck World gave them a killer um, tool bag full of all kinds of goodies. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna do it again this year. So, and, and their fuel is like 40 cents cheaper than the place across the road. So it's gonna be a killer day. And it starts at 10 a.m., goes to four, 10, four, good buddy. So I hope to see you there. Last up today for Scriber Rides. Um, <clears throat> I haven't done it in a few weeks, so I've kind of lost track of some pictures. But um, go ahead and keep sending me pictures. And uh, if you don't see them for a while, don't worry, uh, I'll get to them. But anyways, uh, these pictures that I'm going to show you today um, are from Carl Joyce. Uh, the first one is, uh, I think, him as a boy in his dad's truck. And then there's a picture there of the uh, maroon KW and uh, these KWs that he sent me, I mean, they're very close to the year of uh, 
Grasshopper. Six, Grasshopper 66, I think one of these was a 67, and then there's also a couple picks of old, uh, right around that time frame, KW cab overs that he and his cousin uh, saw somewhere. But uh, the first picture there, as I said, was him as a boy. The next picture is the maroon one, and his cousin's painting the wheels, and uh, Carl is up on the back painting the stacks, if you can see it in there. The picture's a little fuzzy, but uh, they're there. And then uh, the Peterbilt that's got white with red stripes was one that the, the sleeper caught fire, so they took the sleeper off and made it a day cab. And then the white W900, I believe, is a 77 um, that needs a little bit of work, but uh, really it's, it's mostly all there. So um, I think that's all the picks. And then the last two uh, cab overs, that's the two that uh, he and his cousin uh, saw sitting somewhere. So just some kind of nice old school rides, especially KWs. So I uh, thought I would share them with you, and we'll be sharing more Scriber rides in the coming episodes. So listen, until next time, keep the hammer down. Safe and sound.